Uber Eats, legitimate way to make an income, or a Punjabi social club. Uber Eats, worth it or dead? Hi, welcome, I'm Jasper, and I've been an Uber Eats delivery person for like four years now. Um, in fact, I'm signed in right now, uh, as you can see there. So I apologize in advance if I have to go off and do a delivery. But that seems pretty unlikely um, because it seems like Uber Eats as a field uh, for work, it seems to be dying. In fact, a recent rideshare advocacy report suggests that in Toronto, we make as little as six or seven dollars an hour. And we spend most of our time just waiting around for an order. Bring a book next time, buddy. But is this really true? Is Uber Eats really dead? Well, before I get into that, I want to paint a small picture of how Uber Eats used to be back in 2020, 2021, 22, back when it was unmistakably alive. We'll then have life signs to look for to see if it might still be alive today. Now, I started doing Uber Eats in 2020, during lockdowns. Back then, the base fee was still only $3. But every day, we'd have surges and boosts that could rocket our earnings toward the moon. During lunch and dinner rushes, we could make $8 or more per order, before the tip. You could easily bank $1,000 a week, absolute minimum, working regular human hours. That's like an easy four grand a month, and for a single person, that's close to a living wage in Toronto. Almost. Now, despite the, you know, precarious real world circumstances going on at that time, my employment life was pretty good, except the time I ran into the fire hydrant. Uh, that was almost the end. But other than that, it was pretty good. I even had this, you know, great colorful bag that was very optimistic. In fact, I made a friend because he had the same bag I had. This kid was the OG of the Uber dream back then. He just chilled at Ossington and Argyle all day and ran this little territory. I remember around the first time that I met him, he asked me, are you a walker or a biker? And I remember we were both just sitting there on our bikes and I was like, yo, what do you mean we're biking? And then he turned to me, you know, kind of had like a wry smile and said, I walk on a bike. I don't know if that's how he really sounded. He might've been Russian. I don't know, or he might've been from somewhere else, but that kid was doing so well and he was just in walker mode and he would just have this little territory and he would just take these little orders and just ride his bike there and complete them. It was remarkable. I even started using walker mode strategically, like in the rain or snow. And oh man, walker mode was legit back then. Not some like legacy button that it kind of is now. I mean, you can, you can hit it, you can hit that button and turn on walker mode, but God help you, you're, you're not getting any orders. You're not really not gonna get any orders. Oh man, I saw this walker yesterday. He cannot be real. He must be a time traveler. I can only hope that he finds his way back to 2020. Now, there were still problems back in Uber's golden days, right? Like people would still get randomly deactivated. Uh, they'd hide our tips. But all in all, it was a neat job. You know, just biking around the city, making $30 an hour. And maybe that was just too good to be true. Now, one thing I started to hear when I was riding around the streets, even when I started, is that Uber, Uber is getting greedy, okay? Because back in like 2020 or pre-2020, orders used to be worth a legendary $10. Not like this. So over time, Uber has been strategically reducing our pay. And then what I also started hearing and experiencing for myself is, you know, man, it's it's getting dead out here. Where where did all the orders go? 
where did they go? So I want to say now three reasons that I think that might explain why Uber has been steadily declining, especially the steeper decline that really began around the start of 2023. The first thing I'll say is that the Uber market is oversaturated. Oversupplying the market has always been one of Uber's essential goals. A surplus of delivery people means customers are more likely to receive orders on time, but for us, it means we now spend the majority of our time just waiting around for an order. Or socializing, of course, if you happen to be so lucky to know the unofficial language of Uber. Which I wish I did. I wish I did. The market saturation is only getting worse and worse. So where are all these delivery people? Where are they coming from? Well, Canada's population has seen a historic surge recently. And a big part of that is temporary workers, and especially international students. And it's diploma mills, big business, right-wing think tanks, the Trudeau government, everyone in a position of power is pushing for more temporary workers and immigration because they all make money off of them. And this surplus of labor flooding the market means that they can exploit their worker rights, and in this case, pay them less than minimum wage. And then there's me, of course, who's really in a better position. I just gotta figure out what the heck to do with my life now. I mean, what am I doing? What, what is the meaning of it all? I, I really don't know. Now, as if the lack of work isn't bad enough, what makes it even worse is how much Uber has slashed our wages by changing the way in which it pays us. Surges and boosts, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're long gone, they're history. You see any surges here? Any boosts? Those spots, those, those, what are they, pink or reddish spots? Those are just the illusionary hot spots that Uber talks about. So while the base order of $3 has remained the same, it no longer gets elevated, no longer goes up. It could, but those are more rare exceptions, and I'll get into one of those in a second. But this has been a severe pay cut. It's got to be at least 50%, probably more. And they also get away with this because so many people have become dependent on Uber for their income. So they don't have another job at the moment, and it's really hard to get a job. So when they slash our wages, all of a sudden, oh my gosh, we can't pay our bills anymore. We have no option to get another job because it's so hard to get a job. The job market's horrible here in Toronto, and so you're stuck on Uber, even though you're barely making any money now. And again, part of the reason they can do this is there's just so many of us now as well. That's also included in this. Now, there's also something called algorithmic wage discrimination. And here's what I mean by that. Uber's algorithm is always trying to find the person who will take the lowest offer for a delivery. Uber has tons of data on your acceptance rates, and it will try to offer you just enough to get you to take an order. If you accept most orders, like an ant, the app may offer you less money. But if you're a cherry picker, more selective of your orders, you may be offered maybe a bit more to get you moving. Or maybe if you're like me and kind of online all the time, then you're also less likely to get an order because Uber knows that I'm here online all the time, always here for them, no matter what. So they'll just give it to someone else because when they really need an order done, they'll just call me. To make things worse, they now have this thing called trip radar, right? And it pops up and you gotta quickly like use your thumbs and like hit it as hard as possible and as fast as possible to have any hope of getting that order because they're really competitive offers now. Cause it's not like, you know how it used to be where, okay, you can just wait, you know, and oh, you know, okay, you can look at it. Do I want this order? Do I not want this order? Now it's not enough. It's not enough that we're online. Uber wants us literally sitting there staring at our phones so we can be the first one to hit this trip offer. In fact, the majority of my offers now seem to be trip radar offers. They're competitive offers. Everyone's like sitting there 
trying to get the offer. That's how they want us to be. And it's insane. You add to this like triple orders and the killing, the virtual killing of Walker mode. Um, the fact that they seem to prioritize cars now over bikers. I mean, Uber's algorithm is just firing at us from all angles and we really don't have a chance. We're up against some software, some, you know, learning AI software, you know, versus a guy just who, you know, rides his bike, you know, and pedals as fast as he can. I mean, it's not a fair competition. Finally, the third reason for the decline of Uber is the economy. Across Canada and Toronto in particular, inflation is just totally out of control. Our money just becomes less and less valuable and the cost of living just keeps going up and up and there's this insane imbalance and so many people are struggling in Canada right now. Uber's fees have gone up too and people are feeling the squeeze. They're less inclined to order food or to tip. Uber probably stopped hiding our tips because we don't really get them anymore. <laughs> They're so rare. There's nothing really to hide. And they say, oh, look how you know good and transparent you are. We are now. You know, you can you can see all the tips you're getting. Well, they make all these changes to the algorithm that completely send our wages into the oblivion. The decline of Uber then can be described as like an anti-trifecta of like no work, no pay no tips. God help us. So is Uber dead? That's a good question. And to answer that as well, we kind of have to ask which Uber? Because well, Uber people are basically declaring bankruptcy. Uber the company has now declared themselves profitable for the first time. The stock has soared over 140% over the last year and Wall Street is just eating it up. A primary reason for our drop in pay is so that Uber can be profitable for shareholders. And it's also really important to say that Uber's ultimate goal, you know, it doesn't include you. You know that, right? Uber's have been talking about creating like a fleet of self-driving cars since their inception. And quite comically, they actually wasted $2.5 billion on self-driving cars that couldn't drive more than half a mile before suffering a disastrous accident. That actually makes sense. That car robot was probably using the navigation software that is in Uber's app. And I could see why it would crash every half mile if that was the case. But Uber is now using a Waymo or Google self-driving car, apparently in Arizona for rides. Could this become widespread? Will Uber ever get someone to make a self-driving car for them? But I mean, this doesn't really matter for us, right? Like where Uber eats, how could a robot, you know, pick up food and deliver food? That doesn't, doesn't quite make sense, right? So we should be, we should be fine here. This won't, this won't affect us. Uber Eats said it was going to start delivering food in parts of Tokyo on Wednesday using self-driving robots. Yep. Look at this little guy go. Oh my God. Is this a cute novelty thing or is this the future? In any case, Uber is trying to get rid of you. And yes, I'm talking to you. Uber wants you gone. They want you out of the picture. That's something we're already feeling. They're already phasing us out. They're reducing uh, our pay. There's so few orders now because they've gotten so many people to sign up for the app. They didn't cap it. They didn't say only this many people can work. No, it's unlimited. It's a billion people. A sixth of the planet can work for Uber. And then they would say, great, this is fantastic. This is what we wanted all along. We are a dying breed. Look at this guy. He's probably in one of Uber's self-declared hotspots, which is really just the deadest part of an already dead city. He has no idea why he makes the little money that he does. He's trapped in an impenetrable wage system. I mean, this is no longer 2020. He's lost in time. He's a phantom of Uber Eats. He's a ghost just looking to complete a delivery that probably doesn't even exist. Just bike around in circles looking for something to do. <laughs> Look at that robot, buddy. Look at that robot. That's the future. 
This is the future not just of Uber Eats, but the next phase of human work. It's us getting replaced by robots and working for corporate AI systems that run our lives through inscrutable algorithms. And us Uber people are just so nice or uh, desperate that we're offering ourselves for experimentation on how people will get phased out of the workforce. So yeah, to bring us back around, is Uber Eats a Punjabi meetup group that's just sponsored by Uber and maybe others if you're multi-apping? Well, no, I think there's a lot more going on than that. Hi, I'm you, but better. Can we stop it? 